Hey, welcome back to Telemetry Overlay. This is an advanced tutorial, so I'm assuming you've already watched the basic one, and this is what your project might look like by default. So now, I'll use the delete key to delete some of the gauges. But if you want to do advanced work, what you should do is go to the settings and disable automated gauge creation. That way, when you import some footage or data, the standard gauges will not be created and you can create your own. And the second setting I wanted to show you is the grid guides. You can create proportional lines that help you compose your image. So for example, let's choose number two, which means it will split the image in halves. And that way we can align something to the center, for example, and tweak the final position with the arrow keys of, the, of your keyboard. And now let's choose, for example, number three, which is following the rule of thirds, which is a pretty popular way to compose images. And this can go up to a 10 by 10 grid. But if you're working on a project for TV, instead of a grid, you may need the title and action save area. So you can create it with this toggle and anything within the guides will be safe for broadcast TV. Now let's have a quick look at the units presets. By default, the system will try to guess what your units are depending on your region, but uh, you can change this. This will define what units new gauges use, but of course you can change them on a gauge per gauge unit afterwards. Additionally, you could select nautical for uh, C units like uh, knots or nautical miles, and American if you prefer American dates. That's uh, month, day, year, instead of day, month, year. Finally, in the directory section, you can choose where to save your exports and your cache. Make sure this is set to a drive where you have enough space, otherwise you will encounter problems. And every now and then, when you're done with a big project, it's recommended to delete the cache to save up some space. Let's now look at the project settings. So on the right hand side, you can start by customizing your project name to anything you may want. This is the name the project will save us. And you can of course change your resolution and frame rate to anything you want. It is not recommended to go to any higher resolution than your video footage and to any higher frame rate. One thing to note is that changing the resolution may change the appearance of some elements. For example, if we add a GPS map, we'll see how the features change with resolution. Higher resolutions show much finer details. So I'll move this to the side. And now let's see preset colors. By changing preset colors, you change the colors new gauges will have. It does not affect existing ones. So let's add a new speedometer. And as you can see, it's got this blue color, but of course, you could change it to anything afterwards. And here's how to change shadows. You can change their opacity, so they stand out more or less, and also their, their distance, which has a similar effect, but you can adjust it to the size of your elements and see what works best. Now, in order to see what fonts do, I will add the time and date gauge, and display some additional label, the title. So we've got two font options, the standard one, which changes text and some of the numbers. And then for numbers that need a fixed width, um, that is monospaced uh, numbers, you've got another font option that will try to select fonts with a fixed width only. But I like the default ones. Finally, down here, you can see the drawers, which allow you to create areas where gauges will stand out more. So it's a nice way of framing the gauges. So let me recompose my project a bit. And I will add some minimal gauges, which work well in drawers. That looks good. And since we've got this background, we could get rid of shadows to have a cleaner design. Okay, let's see how to trim your project by setting in and out points. I will set up a speed versus time gauge that will help us visualize what's happening. And let's bring back the shadows so it stands out a bit more. Now, you see how in the first minute, nothing really happens data-wise. So we've got this flat graph. We can get rid of that by finding the moment the action starts and setting the in point there with this button. Or you could also use the I key for in point. We can go to the end, and whenever the action ends, press the out point button or the O key. And now our project covers only the interesting parts. If you're working with telemetry data external to your camera, 
it is very important to sync it to the video. So in order to show you the syncing methods, I have set up this project with two data sources. To the left, we've got the Insta360 telemetry, which is already synced to the video. On the right, we've got the Garmin watch data, which is not synced. And as you can see, the time gauge shows different values, the map shows a different position, and the speed value is different as well. And that's because by default, both telemetry sources are linked to the video start, which is only correct for the Insta360 footage. Probably, the easiest way to sync your data is to record the moment you start your GPS tracker, in this case the watch. So you can look for that point in the video, pause it there, and press the Starts Now button. This will apply an offset so the telemetry data starts the moment you tell it. The offset is in seconds and milliseconds. This one's pretty close, we're about a second off, but we can tweak it a bit until we get an almost perfect match. When doing this with just one data source, you will have to visually check that sync and speed and GPS position are correct. The same would be possible if you recorded the moment you stopped the GPS tracker. So make sure you record at least one and use starts now or ends now accordingly. Similarly, you can sync the data to the in or out points. Just make sure the offsets are set to zero. Go to the project section like before and look for the moment the data starts and you can fine-tune your position with the arrow keys or the skip frame button. Set the in point there, but as we've seen, changing the in and out points changes the amount of data we see. So starts now and ends now is a preferred method to this one. In this case, because we're lucky enough to have more than one data source, and one of them is already synced with the video, we can just sync the unsynced source to the synced one. And the match will be almost perfect. This setup is useful if, for example, your camera records GPS, but not your cadence or heart rate. So this way you can have both. The option video timestamp tries to do something similar, but it's usually not accurate at all, as video timestamps don't usually rely on GPS timing. And just to show you how I created this, when you have multiple data sources, you can go to the bottom of the gauge settings and change the source you want to use. In this case, the selected data doesn't look great, but we can improve it with the right amount of smoothing. We've now seen how to sync the data to something. Let's now see how to fix the duration or speed of the data. A typical example of these are time lapses, because the data might be in real speed, but the video is not. So as you can see here, despite the fast movement of the video, the GPS position is barely changing. So we can fix that easily by going to the Sync tab and tell the data speed to match the video speed. This will generally do a good job, but you can always apply some additional stretch to correct for inaccuracies. If your telemetry data does not match the length of your video, you could always set in and out points in the project tab when your data starts and ends, and then set the data speed to in to out. We've seen how to trim the project, but there's something different called gauge trimming. This does something different for every gauge, and you can get specific information using the question mark tips, but let's see some examples. For example, let's create a title, align it to the corner, and we will want to show this only at the beginning of the video. So let's go to the Trim Title tab, go to the fourth second, for example, and set the end of the trim. So at four seconds, the title disappears. Now this is a bit abrupt, so let's go to the Gauge Controls, Shape tab, and add some fade in and fade out time. And now we've got some smooth transitions for the text. Custom images behave in a similar way, but if we look at the time and date gauge instead, trimming turns it into a stopwatch, a timer. So we can look for what looks like the start of the track, set the in point there, and now we've got the total race time. We can probably get rid of hours and of the date. And whenever we thought the race was over, we could fix the final time. 
and the third type of trim is that of the GPS path gauge. In this case, it will allow us to trim the path drawing, but nothing else. Let's see how that works. We can set the start point at any point of the track. Scroll until that lap is completed. And then set the out point. That way, only one lap is drawn, which looks much cleaner. While the gauge dot keeps running for the entire project, or in this case, the entire race. So now we've seen how to trim a project, how to trim gauges, but what if you want to save just a section of your video without modifying the data you show? You can do that in the export section. Setting in and out points here doesn't change what the data looks like. It only changes your export duration. And now that we are in the export section, note that you can change the export format to a transparent one. This means you can integrate the gauges with your professional video editing workflow, be it Adobe Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, or whatever you're using. And finally, let's have a quick look at patterns. So for example, I've created this structure with gauges on a drawer, and I can go to the Patterns tab and save it for later. This means that when I'm working on a different project, I can just go to Patterns, load it, and all the work is done. You will only have to focus on syncing, trimming, setting in and out points, and things that depend on the specific data and video you're working on this time. Throughout the tutorial, I've used a couple of keyboard shortcuts, but in the help section, you've got information about many more. So make sure to have a look to speed up your workflow. And that's it. Feel free to ask any question in the comments and make sure to subscribe for the next tutorials, experiments, and other fun stuff.